G'day, Professor Joseph Drew here. I'm here to talk to you this time about a forthcoming publication on regarding the financial outcomes of the 2016 New South Wales amalgamations. This table is taken directly from this publication, which hopefully you'll be able to access early next year. And we're best off just looking at model two. It's a complicated econometrics. It's the mathematics that the economists do. It's part of my trade. Um, and most of it's incredibly boring. But what we're doing here is comparing amalgamated councils to non-amalgamated councils. We've got four, four years of financial data following the amalgamations to look at. And we've controlled for every conceivable thing that might have affected the performance. And what we find that when we do all this is that the uh, cost per assessment, which is the best basis to look at for local government efficiency, has increased by 11% as a result of the Fit for the Future 2016 New South Wales amalgamation. So if we're just looking at the treatment effect, what did the amalgamations do? Well, the answer, according to the data, the six-year panel of data, really rigorous econometrics, the answer is that the amalgamations put up the cost structure for the amalgamated local governments by 11%. Now you'll notice the two little stars there. That means it's at the highest level of statistical significance. You can bank your house on this. This is the sort of level of statistical significance that's used for making really important decisions like uh, vaccination efficacy and things of that kind. I also in this paper look through all the fit for the future ratios. Those of you who were in New South Wales during the time remember that local governments were to self-assess according to these financial ratios. And if they didn't pass certain thresholds, they were supposed to be amalgamated and the amalgamation was supposed to make them fitter for the future. This was how we measured their fitness for the future. Now, what we find here, looking again, just at this DID variable, the other things that controls, we find that the over own source ratio for amalgamated councils went down the precise opposite of what we intended. The operating performance ratio for amalgamated councils went down yet again. Both of these is significant at the 1% level of statistical significance. The debt service ratio actually improved, but it's not statistically significant. So what that means is some councils went up, some went down, it's all conflated and we can't really tell for sure. The building infrastructure renewal ratio, also not significant, but it went down. The infrastructure backlog ratio, also not significant, but it went up, which is actually a bad thing for this ratio. It goes backwards to the other ones. And the asset maintenance ratio has also deteriorated. So we know that the amalgamations, the treatment effect, first of all, it's increased the cost for local governments by about 11%. Um, this is looking at four full financial years worth of data following the amalgamations. We also now know that the uh, financial sustainability ratios upon which a lot of the amalgamations were based have also deteriorated as a result, as a direct result of the amalgamation, holding everything else constant. This is not a good outcome for local governments. Now, the reason why this happens is that these amalgamations are all predicated on these things called economies of scale. And the idea is that for a lot of functions, as output increases, costs head downhill. And the idea is if you can get to the optimal scale, which is right on the bottom of this U-shaped curve, you can be the most efficient that a council can be, reduces your, your unit cost and therefore increases your sustainability. But the problem is, there's a couple of problems here. First of all, most local government functions don't have these economies of scale, these U-shaped curves. Most functions, actually I've shown in other research, are straight lines. As you increase output, it doesn't change costs at, at all, one little bit. The other problem is the functions that are um, amenable to economies of scale tend to have their optimal scales at different sizes, at different numbers of assessments or numbers of people, however you're measuring it. Now, this is a problem because when you amalgamate the count, a council, you can only get to one size. Everything gets set up at, at one particular size. Now, if that happens not to be the optimal scale, you won't get optimal outcomes. Indeed, 
If that happens to be in this part of the curve where it's heading uphill, you can see that in both of these curves here, that's actually going to increase costs. That's what we refer to as diseconomies of scale. Now, prior to the amalgamations, I did several papers with the great Brian Dollery, and I showed that diseconomies of scale were likely. And the results that I've just shown you now, looking at things for full financial years following the amalgamations, clearly demonstrate that diseconomies have actually occurred, which is a really terrible result for local governments and the communities that they serve. So where to from here? That's the more, more important point. My videos are not about bashing people for past mistakes. What we've got to do is recognize that we've made a mistake and start taking some positive action to, to fix it, to address these problems. So one thing you can do if you're one of these poor councils that were caught in this disaster is to increase your local government taxes. And lots of amalgamated councils have already done that. Armadale, Federation, Kudamundra Gundagai, 53.5%. Canterbury Bankstown, 36.34%. George's River, 32.6%. These are steep tax increases. And some of these local governments, I don't think the increase that they asked for and had approved is going to be sufficient. I think they'll be coming back for further special rate variations in future years, sadly. That's one solution is to increase your taxes. Another solution, potential solution, and this is a new idea that um, I only float in this paper, is for the state government to consider starting a brand new grant scheme, untied grants, only available to amalgamated councils, and ideally set a, a level to compensate them for the deleterious effects of the amalgamations, i.e. that extra 11% per annum unit cost that they're now trying to work with. Um, if the government was to give them that 11%, of course, that gets us them back in this, the situation that they were in prior to the amalgamation. It allows them to deal with the situation and, um, and ensure that they're financially sustainable without putting their residents under further stress and financial stress and pain. That's an option. Another option is the local governments just start to fail financially. Now we've seen that. At uh, Central Coast, there were other issues involved, such as audit failure, but a lot of it was due to the local government amalgamations. We've had a couple local governments had very narrow escapes. I've said before on videos, there's at least half a dozen that could topple any day. This is what we do. If we, if we do nothing, your choice is that you, we are going to financially fail, that there is no other outcome. You can't ex increase expenditure, unit expenditure by 11%, and do nothing and expect to survive financially. It just won't happen. And the final option, which I also know is not very popular, with certainly with regulators, is de-amalgamation, but it's a real live option. I've done other videos on it. You know, we've got, we've had many de-amalgamations in Australia already. It's something we know how to do. It's something I've written about extensively. There's no reason why we couldn't do that when and where it is indicated as the best treatments for local governments. Okay, so all this information will be in the paper when it comes out early next year in an A ranked, in fact, Australia's best pu public administration journal. So it's also covered in my new publication through Springer called Saving Local Government. This book will be released very, very early next year, like New Year's Day. Um, and it was written particularly for people in the local government sector. I wrote it with councillors, mayors, and local government executives in mind. I write it in a nice, simple, conversational way, and I explain all the important theories and ideas that you guys need to know to serve your communities better. It was, I get very little out of writing a book and doing these videos, it was purely there to help you guys. So. Please, if you can get a copy of that, please do so. And I'm, I'm looking forward to people implementing these ideas and us improving local government for the benefit of everyone. Um, one thing I must say in conclusion is, look, these commercial consultants involved in the Fit for the Future debacle must be held to account. Um, my understanding is that it would be reasonable if their, their work was not fit for purpose to seek, seek a legal remedy, but certainly they must be exposed because all the assumptions and guesswork were clearly wrong. We've said it beforehand, scholars like me and Professor Dollery said it beforehand, and now we can show and prove that it was certainly wrong. 
I want people to acknowledge that we've made a mistake. Um, and then I want people to start sitting down and thinking about how we can fix it. And I've got some good ideas. If you're the Minister of Local Government or the Premier, please contact me. I want to help. If you're in a local government that's struggling with post-amalgamation, please contact me. I'm willing and wanting to help. I don't want communities anywhere to suffer. Now, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe and please send the link to other people. The whole idea of this channel is to get the knowledge out there into the hands of the people who can use it best to do something to help communities with. So I need your help. I need you to be flicking this link to your colleagues, your friends, and, and getting them to watch these videos so that we all have the right reliable facts on which to base really good decision making on. Thank you so much for your time. Goodbye.